Hey, hello. So I've been recording the next part of the tutorial and at the beginning of it I wanted to do like a little intermission where I cleaned up some things uh, but it turned out to be so long that I thought, you know what, let's put it in a different video which is this one and since all the changes I'm going to do in this video are really just optional, just, you know, uh, order and cosmetics and stuff that's really not all that important for the building generation, I just thought, you know, let's put this in this video as an optional video. You can really skip this one and don't miss out on anything major just go to the next part if you wanna um, if you wanna get to the meat of it if you see some slight inexplainable changes to our geometry node setup well that's what we are doing right here I just didn't want to bother you if you just want to power through and see the actual content so you know I'm going to upload both videos at the same time it's not like a tactic to generate more content it's just I thought this part might be a little bit boring so <laughs> I wanted to exclude it from the main tutorial. Well, anyways, uh, here you go. I hope you enjoy or, or not. I don't know. <laughs> there is one thing that I stupidly didn't do and I don't even know why because in my original file I did it. Um, we do not need those ceiling nodes, of course, because there are other inputs um, than these float numbers which go like 3.350 in this case. There are whole number inputs and we can just use those. <laughs> but I don't know. For some reason I was stupid. I didn't think of this this time at part one um, for example you could take uh, which one would have such a node for example the point instance node uh, under collection uh, you have to disable whole collection you get this seed slider which is uh, part of some other nodes as well just find one and plug it into a new input and then you get a wonderful whole numbered input uh, now i can delete it again get rid of it um, open up the panel m and once I select it, I can even specify like uh, a minimum of zero and a maximum of, I don't know, 13. And now it's locked in between those two values. How neat is that, right? Um, and now if I hit plus, it will just copy the last value that I've input, uh, which is practical. Unfortunately, we have to change those min max values every time again. I guess we have to do some work, right? And now instead of these inputs that we created at the beginning of the tutorial, I can just uh, hit control. I don't know if you have to have node wrangler enabled perhaps and drag and drop this value into these whole number values, right? I'm going to rename them because that's just a little bit easier to understand. And you might have noticed our building disappearing. That's because we have zero in all three of these values right now. So there it is again. I think I want the minimum value of the height to be three because that's like the smallest our building can get. Right now it's just two, but uh, you just have to imagine that there's like one layer of roof coming to that. So I'm going to go to height and select a min of three. And I don't know what's what's good, like a hundred, a hundred stories. That's a pretty significant skyscraper. And the other axis, I think the minimum is three. Yeah, and, and I'm talking about like the actual literal number of blocks that are next to each other. So I'm going to get in here and put in a minimum of three for both of these. Oh, that's the default value. I don't want to change that. Let's keep it, yeah, three is all right, you know. So however, let me quickly zero them out. If I select three at all three values, then you can see, well, this building isn't three blocks wide at all. It's rather five. Well, and we can just use the ceiling nodes that are right here that we no longer need because, I mean, there's nothing to round left. So first of all, I I don't even know why I have two ceiling values here that lead to the same input. I'm going to uh, reroute this node again, hitting control and drag and dropping it. So it's all going into the same ceiling node. And now I'm going to change this node from ceiling to subtract and height of three then I should see two blocks here because I'm imagining this roof again. So I want to subtract a number of two. The building is three wide, but it's actually five as of right now. So I'm going to subtract two again here. And I guess we just have to do the same thing again here. And now I have three wonderful whole numbers. And when I put in a three, the building will actually be three tall. Well, it will be once we add the roof. So however, before you rejoice and lean back, we have this other group input that you shouldn't forget and we have to change these inputs too. So let me drag this one down to our new value and that one too. And now I think since those inputs should, let me check this last note here. Yeah, now they should have no longer any connection. I can bring up the side panel, pressing N 
and actually delete them. We no longer need them. And you know what? Let's move up those other nodes that we've created. Be sure to not move anything above this geometry input. Otherwise, we'll get this uh, error message. I don't even know what this error message does, but you know, it's an error message. I really want to avoid it. So keep the geometry input at the top. But you might have noticed that our corners are no longer being calculated correctly. And the problem is that these rounding rules kind of messed us up. Um, the, the easy explanation is we just have to change these add and subtract values around. First of all, I'm going to combine um, using Node Wrangler, shift and right click drag. I'm going to combine these inputs so it's a little bit easier to work with. And I have subtracted two from our inputs, which we now have to copy over here before we divide it. So let me quickly subtract two. But our corners still are not fixed. We actually have to change around a couple of these additions that we did last time. And you already know how I would do it. I'm, I just trial and error it. In this case, I'm just going to tell you how to do it. We no longer need this addition at the top. You can just mute it or delete it. And we no longer going to need this addition at the bottom. You can also get rid of it. However, we are going to need one more addition node that goes into this position X left wall uh, attribute compare node. And at the bottom divide that goes into the position Y bottom wall, I'm going to add a value of two. And at the top one that goes into the left wall and now it should restore the building how it was before. So apparently I did not get all the values right. I've made the building pretty big just so I can check out that even in extreme cases, the math is still correct. And as you can see, now we actually only have corners in the corners. <laughs> These are the values that I recommend you put in there. That's the problem if you discover a mistake like this so late in the game. If you haven't started yet, I'd recommend you going with uh, this whole number approach right away. Um, I'm sorry for the confusion and you don't have to do what I did right now. You know, it's not necessarily more or less good or clean or fast. It's just personal preference. <laughs> 